Good morning, everybody. This is Thursday, 3rd of August, 2023. Um, it's our usual Tuesday and Thursday current market analysis. My name is Anil. Do remember this presentation is for education purposes only and should not be construed as investment advice. As is required, please take a moment to read the risk disclaimer. Understand that it's risky, that you need to know what you're doing. Make sure you educate yourself. Those of you who watched my previous um, webinars, you'll know all about me. Have a look at some of the previous where I go into a little bit more detail about my trading in terms of algo development, algo trading, and uh, discretionary trading as well. Um, I developed strategies for um, performance. So today, um, we're going to look at probably two or three um, charts. Um, we'll have a look at the British pound. We've got some interest rate news coming out later on today at midday. Um, I want to recap on the euro and the gold that we looked at um, on Tuesday and see how that panned out. Uh, we'll also take a look at um, the news calendar, see if anything else is happening this week for the rest of this week and just see how that will affect um, our mindset in terms of taking you know, longer term positions. The other thing I want to show you is our free plus Zen for Next tools. Um, they can be found and they are free. I keep re-emphasizing this because, you know, the value of these tools in there are, are you know, are worth having. And the fact that you don't have to play, uh, pay for them, you know, it's worth having a play around to see whether they suit your trading style. A couple of tools. If I get a chance, I'll look at trading views and featured ideas, which is within that free tool set, including economic calendar. Um, but it does depend on how far I get with the charts and any questions that uh, you guys might have. So I'll be answering any questions. If you have any particular instruments that you want me to have a look at, um, I'll take a look at them. And um, generally, you know, our main focus really is looking at the charts, seeing what's happening, see what uh, impacts there could be, and just generally look at levels and see how they might help, you know, in your analysis process. So let's go straight to gold, I think it was. Yeah, I think we mapped out this on Tuesday where we were creating higher highs and higher lows. And our bias was very much on the buy side. We drew some areas where if prices didn't bounce from these levels, then we'd be really looking to see uh, shorts. And in fact, that's exactly what happened. It broke this lower, uh, this higher um Higher low, broke it. Re, it gave us a chance to get out of this, uh, get into this trade by the retest on this support level, which we drew on Tuesday. And from there, really, it's just been continuing to come down. So that was a, a good call. And it's the straightforward processes that I follow all the time. And, um, you know, you'll notice when it did come down to this level here, it hit a level which I had drawn previously. And just to re-emphasize how important it is to do sort of a top-down approach in terms of um, you know, knowing where your levels are. Again, re-emphasize, I don't use moving averages or oscillators or anything like that. Um, I've gone through all that process and you know, discarded them you know, systematically, basically, because for me, they don't work. So I tend to look at um, support, resistance, channels, and fib levels as well. So um, I will go through all three charts from a top-down approach. And the reasoning for this, the reason why I keep doing the same thing over and over again is because what you want to do is develop a process, right? You want to be able to do the same thing um, day in, day out, become familiar with it, understand how all these levels work, and then in time, you know, you'll start seeing which levels are more important than others, and it will free you from, you know, moving, crossing moving averages, which is the biggest thing I get asked, I guess, when we do our workshop is, you know, which is the best moving average. Um, and I'm able, I'm able to answer that question because I don't know. Um, all I can really do is teach you what I know works for me on a consistent basis. The fact that I develop algos in a systematic approach, I still use price action and support levels really to to aid 
any development that I have on algos. So I try to avoid, um, and, and, and I will you know, say this, that if you do use them, nothing wrong with that. If they work for you, that's fantastic. Let's have a look at the euro dollar. Let's um, zoom out a little bit. Let's uh, get rid of this for a bit and start looking at. So we noticed on Tuesday on a, on a daily basis that it was following this channel and it's actually continued to follow this channel, right? We looked at these levels here, very similar to gold in a way. Um, with the euro, it broke down from this uh, and I think that already done it. So I think we were looking at it. Let me magnify that a little bit. So we were looking at it on Tuesday and we were looking at these levels here to see if they could hold. And we were looking to see if they would break down and then continue in this downward channel. And so we noticed that the breakout was signaling an early signal for us that we're now going to be following a downward channel. And nothing has changed so i'm not going to necessarily get rid of any of these lines but i will show you how i do my um, top-down approach and we might do that on british pound i've done it for the gold and uh euro dollar we'll go through them and see and show you how i do them and how these levels are so accurate in terms of um you know either entries or stops or targets because you know it's not just about is the market going up or down it's also about how far could it go and how far could it go against me? You know, the risk part of it. But, um, you know, nobody can be right all the time. And that's why stops are so important. So the fact that it hit this top level, you know, stop up here would have been really good if you took, you know, the downward uh, um, counter trend trade down into back into this bottom of this channel here. Um, and that's all it is. It's, it's finding these levels working your your trades and your orders in between these levels knowing always that uh, you know you've got some uh, big strong levels to um, lean against in terms of your um, stops and and, in, and indeed targets as well because you know when this retraced from here um, this was a couple of weeks ago we were talking about the fact that if it breaks through this then we'd be looking to go short with a stop here and indeed it's done exactly that so building your confidence up in terms of knowing what when these you know what what you see eventually pans out and works out, then it's just a question about you know how do you risk manage what size trade size you have and and etc. And I go through some of that um, that thinking um, you know on different webinars. But right now, um, let's look at the British pound because that's likely to be impacted a lot today by the interest rate. So there's a um, and before I let me just get rid of everything first. So we'll start as if it's a no no lines on the charts whatsoever. Let's just get rid of everything first. And so we're, we're here we have a daily chart um, from a sort of wide perspective, and we're trying to find a trade right. So this is where if you just try to use you know your, your price action alone. It's difficult because, yes, you can say, well, we're in an upward channel here. We formed a bottom here and we're grinding our way up. We're at the bottom of the channel. But we need to get a little bit more closer than that in terms of, you know, our precise entry points and our precise exit points. So let's just, before we start drawing our lines, let's have a quick look at the um, Zenfinex um, portal because I want to use their calendar for a number of reasons. So what the calendar, and this is within this, um, you know, plus send the next portal. So I will give you this uh, domain again, if you missed it. Um, just sign up, it's free, it'll always be free. Don't worry about, you know, am I gonna get charged this or that or the other? And it has a number of tools, which I won't have time to go through in this session here, but, you know, you're able to get some trade ideas. Um, let's put it for a second. more calendars that sort of do some detail analysis gives you a bit of narrative about the you know the news um and then we have some it's a bit of time to load up just bear with me and some you know trade ideas trade technical views where analysts will you know plot out where they think it's going by giving 
you know, entry points, targets, and extensions. I always say when looking at these, you know, you should always consider um, using your own analysis as a confirming factor before taking these types of ideas. What they're doing, they're just really giving you a, a, a roadmap, basically. And then it's for you to look at your own charts and say, okay, does that ring true with me? Am I on the same direction? Are the levels the same? So it's quite a cool way of, by way of a confirmation. And the other, I'll just go through the titles again. So this is featured ideas, technical views. They're the two that I mentioned at the beginning. And the one I want to look at before we start doing our analysis on um, the British pound is just see what's um, you know, likely to happen in terms of as an outcome of this interest rate. So we got the Bank of England interest rate decision at 12 o'clock London time and expecting a quarter of a percent increase. Um, you know, is it absolutely guaranteed? Nobody knows, right? They could say, no, it's sufficient enough. Uh, it's going to remain the same, which will have an impact. The fact that um, leading analysts are sort of fo um, forecasting 5.25 means is a, is a, there's a probability that it will actually be this number here. And without going through all the different tools here, we're able to look at um, previous Bank of England interest rate decisions, for example, June 22nd, it went up a quarter of percent, and that had a negative impact in the four hours after the news. So the news was announced here. And those of you who do trade news, you know, this is invaluable because you can actually look at previous news, see how it behaved, and we can see here it jumped up, jumped down, and in the next 15 minutes, more or less stayed where it started. But then you can spat, you know, go a little bit further out, one hour, four hours. This is the four hourly. So initial spike, bit of volatility, and then it started its sort of um, direction down. And we'll look at the pound from the last um, announcement. So remember, forecast was um, uh, 4.75, actually was higher than forecast. Uh, and that's something we need to watch for as well, because that was unexpected. We had a 101 pip um, uh, movement as a result from the top of the range, the bottom of the range, in the four hours afterwards. And let me just move this tool out of the way here. And if I close that, we're able to look at uh, you know price charts and how they continued or the price continued thereafter. So this is the June the 26th thing. So we had that movement here and prices started to go up. Uh, and that was probably more to do with, you know, inflation, perception, topping out a little bit, which is really once the Bank of England announced that, uh, you know, there's a possibility that it may go up, but they're not finished yet, then that had a negative impact. So if the interest rate is higher than expected, you know, we expect in fall. So these tools can actually help you at looking at when this news was announced, what it was, what the actual was, what the forecast was, and what happened subsequently. So it's quite a, a nice way of, um, uh, rather than just guessing, is it gonna go up or down as a result of this? You can go back in time and do a little bit of analysis to see if that's helpful to you. So in the afternoon at 1.30, we've got initial jobless claims, which will also have an impact. So we can look at, the previous initial jobs claims. And the last one was last week. Um, and the actual was less than forecast and actually less than previous. And that had a impact on the euro dollar in this example. You can look at other currencies and see how other currencies were affected by it. But I think for me, I just tend to look at the euro dollar and the British pound mainly. Um, and what happened? Um, after that news, four hours after the event, a big drop down. Um, and again, this is more to do with perhaps the dollar index, which I explained in one of my previous videos, is really driving the major currencies because anything that's paired with the um, USD obviously is going to be affected by the dollar index. The dollar index is something that um, we don't trade uh, on our platform. 
yet, but I believe that we're going to be doing dollar index pretty shortly. So you'll be able to utilize the dollar index as a gauge, as an indicator, or as a hedging tool uh, for when you're trading the, um, the you know the euro dollar. Now, and I'll explain some of that in different webinars and in the live trading room that we're planning how you can utilize these these instruments to um, you know a get try to get the direction right, but also how hedging can also help you by utilizing the dollar index. Enough of that, right? So we've got two major news items today: one at twelve, one at 115 and we have some factory orders um, at three o'clock so it's a, so this afternoon's going to be interesting right so there's going to be some volatility um, and we'll see what happens after the news announcements I don't trade too much before news if I can help it um, and after the news I'll have some idea um, you know what is the direction thereafter so we'll do some analysis on the British pound and the euro dollar and we'll just see how we need to position ourselves ahead of this news and any far out levels that we might be able to utilize as potential exit points. Uh, see some more people turning up. That's good. If you have any questions, don't be shy. Please ask any questions you have either about the platform or um, the chart. So let's go straight to the chart. So now what we've done by looking at the calendar. We've now mapped out the afternoon, right? It's eight o'clock, eight seventeen in London. I now know what my I know now my plan for twelve o'clock, and what happens after twelve o'clock? One thirty with initial jobs claims, and factory orders and ISM at three o'clock. So we'll be watching the screens very carefully to see how all these things impact, um, you know, our running trades and any trades that we can do some analysis on. So let's go back to charts and spend a bit of time on charts. Right, so let's just um, first do what I always do. I put my major levels in first. And what I'm trying to do is, again, sorry to keep repeating myself, but I want to frame the market. I want to see from a weekly perspective, what are the key areas? Look, of course I can put one here, but what is the chances of coming back down here in the next few days it's not so that's why it's not necessary to put all the um, the major ones i'm more interested in ones that have um, been visited more recently so we can see here this two levels are really framing the market right we've got a gap here which we'll talk about another time but essentially from a weekly perspective i can then go to a daily and start looking and start making these lines a little bit more accurate. Apologies if the sun is um, affecting. We've got a beautiful sunny morning in um, London here, and it's shining right in my eyes. So I apologize for that. So these two levels that we put in, right? This was resistance, resistance, resistance broke through, came below, messed around, support, support, support. Obviously important. And in the last few weeks, we've had a level of um, resistance. So we're kind of, from a daily perspective, in this range here. So now I'm going to go to the four hourly and start looking at, and, and the reason why I put these, right, they could be good target areas for us uh, because there's going to be a fair amount of liquidity at the top and the bottom of these uh, levels that we've just drawn. So now we're on a four hourly basis and we can start putting some other lines in other levels of support and resistance. So we can see here, and we can see here, this is resistance, resistance, broke through, support, support, went on from this support all the way up to create this resistance. It tried to retest it, great entry point for anybody using particular strategies that look for a, um, a retest. Um, came down beautifully down to here and you know I expect it to come and touch this but obviously that's all to do with what happens with news and other price action so let's put a few more lines in which are on the four hourly perspective so here we can see markets turned on a dime here right so we need to just keep an eye on that we can see here that this price level is probably important in fact, where we are right now, more or less. So if I just move that down a bit, 
and I'll just magnify this a little bit so we can see it a bit more closer. So I've just drawn another one at 2688, and I think, let's see if it's more relevant down here, or and I'm looking for a round number here. So the round number is, 11, uh, is numbers that, you know, big institutional traders will be looking at. And it's, look, it's found some support at this level. It found support previously, found it to be resistance. So we're right on that tipping point. Tipping point meaning, is there going to be a continuation down to at least this level here, which is 2589? Or is it going to bounce off here and start grabbing obvious you know obvious places where there'll be some additional liquidity so these are the uh, oops it's a bit too fast for my own good All right so these are areas that we know probably that there's likely to be liquidity what is liquidity it's where the shorts have put um, their stop losses um, and the breakout traders who are looking to get to go long are also sitting there. So we can we know there's a bit of liquidity around there. And there will be, and then I'll start drawing some rectangles here. So we can see here, around here, there's going to be an area where there's likely to be a fair amount of um, push towards grabbing some of these orders here. It's got a nice little drop, so there's some levels that we can um, you know, we can look at in terms of how we play this as a, a trading idea, right? So now, obviously, we don't know where news is going to come in at, but if we now go to an hourly perspective, I'll, I may go back to the four hourly to put some other levels that I've just seen here, but for now, let's get these wonky ones. So we've seen that it market we bounced away from here, tried to get to this top here, and therefore we can see that we're consolidating to an extent from an hourly perspective around these levels here. So all I'm doing now is building a consolidation area, right? So prices in the in the very short term from an hourly perspective couldn't get below here, couldn't get above here. And we really don't want to do too much inside this because if we try to take trades, let's get a bit closer now. You know, if we try to get trades inside this area, we'd like to get smashed around a little bit, right? So what we're looking to do as, or what I'm looking to do is just look for a breakout on the top side, but I don't take, uh, I, I don't put pending orders in. I want to see how price breaks away from here. And then often high probability that will come back, retest this. And let's just draw some of my ideas as we're here. So if it breaks out here, I'm not going to take first move. Because I'm sure those of you traded before have all had experiences where you put pending orders, you get... Um, hit and then it goes completely the other way so you want to try to avoid that and one of the ways is to so what i'm now doing i'm drawing out some trading ideas that i have that if prices go to the top side and they break this level here yes it may just go straight to the top and i won't get an opportunity to get in but i don't care about that i want to make sure that I get a pullback price, a better price than the, uh, you know, with a retrace, you're looking to see if this was a false breakout or a breakout of this consolidation area for a move up to this level and possibly even you know, this level here. So what I'm doing is I'm mapping out my trade idea. I'm saying to myself, if this happens, I expect this to happen and I'll be targeting if there's an upside. And I'm going to do the same for the downside, but I just want to show you, um, you know, I, I try to build a story on both directions. I, I don't just say, look, I'm convinced it's going to go long. 
because nobody really knows. And I try not to get convinced or have a bias either way. I try to let price action tell me what's what's likely to happen thereafter. So if we get a breakout, yes, it might be a breakout all the way down to this level here. And I won't be able to get a chance to get in. But again, I don't worry about that because there'll always be another trade. And I'll be targeting that sort of 26 level. Um, and you know, my stops depending on how price behaves uh, around here. So I'll be looking for you know initial stop here, target down here. And if I'm going to be using partials, you know, I will look back on the four hourly, as I said, I was going to come back to and really go left and see what other levels are important. And this is another level here, which I want to draw in. And what I'm really trying to do is to see how I can maximize the downside. Uh, you know, the downside meaning a sell order. If, it, if I'm right and it does continue going down, I'll be taking some of my orders off here to take some partial profits. I'll be moving my stop losses to break even. And then I'll be targeting some of these other areas. Remember when we looked at it earlier, you know, we had like, um, uh, you know, the, the top side and the bottom side framed. This was an internal level of support and resistance. So not necessarily going to hold, but this one is more likely to hold. This is more likely to hold than these smaller ones here. So I'm mapping out eventualities on the British pound as a result of, um, you know, the red news that's coming out today. Let's now go back to the hourly. So as I said, I'm looking for partials here. And then maybe if it continues going down, I'd really be looking to see if this can be retested, right? Because right now we haven't broke through this level here. So we don't know, you know is this just a pullback from a longer time frame in an upward direction? Or is the interest rate decision going to have a negative effect on the pound against the US dollar? And then the other levels are down here. So we'll not have a fixed idea, which is important. What we want to be able to do <coughs> is, is determine what ifs. What if this happens? What if that happens? And really, it's just building a story based upon that. Is there any questions? about that so far no don't have any questions which is fine it means i'm explaining it well so during the morning i won't be doing anything so here's what could happen right so let's map out what we think might happen so right now and i might have to go back to the four alley just to show you the general direction right certainly since um let me just uh, zoom out a little bit more. You know, it doesn't take a genius to see that after this peak here, you know, prices have been sort of coming down with a larger channel there. And in many ways, there's an acceleration of that channel because if we draw a new channel, see here that this large channel you know is it going to bounce and go up to meet this uh, channel here taking out this liquidity or is the interest rate decision just going to um, push this pound dollar further down we don't know i don't know nobody knows what we have to do is have a plan for both scenarios and once that uh, price action shows itself then have the you know, the courage to sort of take the trade based upon your idea. Because look, ultimately, it's not going to go up or down, which is a silly thing to say, but that's what it can do. Where we get in and where we have our stops and targets, that's the key, right? If it does go up, where is it like to go to? Because we want to maximize our trade. We don't want to just take a, you know, a few pips out of this. We want to see that as a result of this news, has it got enough power to either take these out, 
or revisit these levels of low here. So that's kind of um, the thinking that I use all the time. You know, remember when we didn't have these lines, it just looked like zigzag lines. But what we've been able to do is narrow it down all the way down to a smaller time frame, right down to the hourly. I don't really look at much below one hour on this type of trading. Obviously, for algo trading, I do use much more smaller time frames for that. Any questions before um, I look at? Um, let's have a look at gold again, because gold will be impacted as well. So let me just um, find a chart where I don't want to destroy these lines necessarily, because they're good just to sort of go through them. So let's start again weekly. Let's do daily. Let's get rid of all these lines first, and we'll do a top-down approach on gold as well. We'll do it a bit more um, speedy. So I've only got about 10, 10, 15 minutes left. Let's uh, get rid of all the objects first. And again, always start longest time frame possible and start putting your main turning points, your main areas of recent price action. Remember, this peak is a bit of an anomaly. Everything closed below this line here. So if we get closer, then we'll start paying attention to this. But right now, I'm happy to frame the market in this way. The other level that I can see might be interesting is down here. So what we've now done from a daily perspective, and I will put a line here, but it will be more obvious on the four hourly. So let's go to the four hourly. And what we can see here, is this level here as active as support in this case, resistance, resistance, resistance. So we know if price comes back to here, you know, it's turned away from it every single time, or one, two, three, four, five, you know, that's multiple times basically. So now we have four hourly. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. And hopefully you'll note will notice that I do the exact same thing, regardless of the instrument, regardless of um, what we're looking at. So now what I'm going to do is see how any of these other levels could be affected. Remember, we've got news coming out at 12, at 1.30 and 3 o'clock, right? So this is my frame. Is it going to come outside this frame as a result of the news? Don't know. But clearly, right, there's going to be some blockages Now, there's, there's going to be plenty of liquidity up the top here and plenty of liquidity down the bottom here because that's where people will be, institutional traders will be positioning, you know, to either go long or short as a result of this. They're, not, they're more interested in longer, longer term moves. So, what's been happening? We're in this range here from a four hourly. Let's put a few more lines in here just to show what else is happening, right? So we can see here, prices turn here and here, here. So we can see here, hopefully you can see what I'm seeing. So we're in a downward channel because look, every time, certainly for a period of time, you know, going back to 18th of July, something like that. After this peak came down, respected this line here, moved up, couldn't get higher than this level here. And then it dropped dramatically, tried to retrace back above here, failed, and then continuously went down. And now we're at that um, point here where it will either break through. And what we'll now do from, a, from an hourly perspective, so let's just sum up. Before I go to the hourly, let me just put some of these other levels in here because they could be used for targets if we're looking for the short and targets if we're looking to go long. So now it's on the four hourly. So hopefully you can see it's about trying to um, get a picture on either direction, which way is it gonna go up or down? So now we can see here, I'm going to go to the hourly for this uh, next bit. 
because literally in four hours we're going to have uh, the Bank of England news, and you know, a few hours after that, we're going to have some US news as well. Stuff here. So now we're on the hourly chart on gold. And we can see here, very similar, I guess, to the euro dollar. We're looking for some consolidation. Here and here. This bar, last bar, hasn't closed. So we have to be a little bit careful, but it's bounced off this level here. And now we're trapped in this range here. Let me now go to an hourly. Well, that is the hourly. Let me get closer to it. So we can see what's happened. So certainly for the last uh, four, eight, 12, 13, 14 hours, big drop down, found a level of support here, and it's just taken out some of its liquidity for the for the traders that were wanting to you know, take the short on the breakout. It's gone back into that range. And what is interesting is that these wicks, wicks meaning you have the main candle body, which is the block, you know, the solid color, and then you have this line. Hopefully, you can see it. I'm actually going to go a little bit. Another thing that I sometimes do when I see lots of wicks is I produce another little box. Which just captures. The bodies right so this hour hasn't finished that might move that but now what we're seeing here is that we've got the peaks right but a lot of the price action has been within these two levels here so we'll be on guard when prices close above this level here because right now prices haven't closed they've closed only inside this white zone that we've created inside the um the orange hope that hope that makes sense let's see if there are any more questions yeah, okay great and here we have price trapped in here we're looking for a breakout on the upside let's see what happens or what we'll be doing if it goes up with any of these fast moves we'll be looking to see if it can come back to this level here so i'm just going to draw a couple of levels here which look interesting to me. So look, prices gap through it, came back, closed the gap, briefly supported, broke down. So any breakout, this would be a good level to take partials and maybe go to break even if you're on the upside. Remember with me, you might do it differently, is you know, putting a pending order there with a target here. And let's put some other targets that we could have potentially go for. Now, if we're in the downward, um, so this is if um, gold is pushed up as a result of the news that's coming out today, then we'll be looking at partials, put stops at break even, second target, and maybe even a third target at the top here with a small runner just to see if it will get and continue in this downward channel. However, because we're in a downward channel, it could actually break down from here. So let's just see what could happen and what areas we'll be looking at. So if there's a breakdown of this consolidation here prior to the news, we're looking to see if this level gets broken. So I'm gonna draw a couple of other levels from an hourly perspective. And we can see here, look, and I'm trying to look at how price reacted at previous times it approached the same level so retreated didn't close above it didn't close above it became support and we're right at that it bounced off this level here so this is clearly um, quite a strong level of support or the market wants to respect this i think in my other previous um, video i mentioned the 1930 value as being important it's actually got got there very, very rapidly and for the downside, so we've done 
a breakout on the upside, first target, break even, second target, and maybe a, a small runner to take to the top of the channel. But if we break down to the downside, then we've got these levels where we can use as targets, basically. I hope that all makes sense. I'm now running into a bit of overtime here. Sorry for keeping this a bit longer than I wanted to. But we've kind of analyzed gold, we've analyzed uh, the British pound. And, you know, like I said, we're, we've got a plan now. We've got a plan of just rather than just jumping in and saying, well, let me just, I think it's going down, let me go down. Or I think it's going, let me just go up. What we want to do is see how price reacts to it and how we can take advantage of that move when it happens. Um, I think unless there's any more questions or any questions, I'm going to call it a day, get back to the charts and um, wait for the Bank of England news coming out in a few hours' time. I'll just wait a few seconds for the um, news, uh, sorry, uh, questions. And what I might do is just go back to the slide here, which um, will give you an indication on how to get to the plus Zenfonix tools, as I said, they're all free. There's no charge. Um, have a navigate around it. There will be some videos on there that will show you how to use each and individual, every one of those tools that are up there. Um, just check one more time, no questions. And on that note, um, I wish you a great day. Keep an eye out for the news and uh, happy trading. Thank you.